TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel's health ministry instructs hospitals throughout Israel to prepare for a northern war. The United States ratchets up pressure on Israel to intensify humanitarian aid into the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip. Jerusalem is proactively seeking Egyptian support to reignite negotiations on a hostage release deal. The war in the hamas played Gaza Strip rages on. IDF aircraft struck over 150 terror targets throughout the Palestinian enclave during the past day alone, while ground forces continue to locate subterranean infrastructure in which the Islamist terror groups have stored large quantities of rocket launchers, rockets, unmanned aerial vehicles and other explosives. Meanwhile, IDF spokesman Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari provided details from a deadly incident in which nine IDF soldiers were regrettably killed and 14 others sustained injuries while preparing to destroy a substantive subterranean weapons manufacturing site. Yesterday, we exposed the largest Hamas rocket and weapons production site in al -Burij. During the operational activity to destroy the underground infrastructure of the weapons production site, an explosion was caused as a result of tank fire identifying an enemy target. It appears that a tank shell hit a nearby power pole, triggering a charge. As a result of the explosion, six IDF soldiers were killed and 14 others were injured. Meanwhile, on Israel's northern front, hostilities continue to intensify. Today, in the north, we eliminated Hezbollah's commander of its southern Lebanese aerial unit, namely Ali Hussein Burji, also known as Abu Mahdi. We eliminated him using an Air Force aircraft. Ali led dozens of attacks using unmanned aerial vehicles against Israel. Throughout the day, several launches were carried out from Lebanese territory. Two unmanned aerial vehicles struck the northern command base. There were no casualties and only minor damage was caused. We are reviewing this event. Ali also carried out this attack and he was eliminated three hours afterwards along with other operatives who were with him. Additionally, we eliminated today an additional terrorist squad that was attempting to launch unmanned aerial vehicles towards the state of Israel. Three terrorists were killed in this strike and their weapons were destroyed. We will continue to act with determination against any threat to our territory, to claim a price and bring about a different security situation along the northern border. It is important to highlight that in response to the escalating situation in the north, the Israeli Health Ministry instructed hospitals to prepare for an influx of thousands of casualties. Per the instructions, hospitals were told to prepare within 24 hours notice to move into bomb-proof areas among other emergency measures. Meanwhile, in Lebanon, Hezbollah held a funeral for the commander of its elite Radwan unit, who was killed in an Israeli retaliatory strike on Sunday. Speaking after her son was buried, mother of the slain Hezbollah terrorist proclaimed that the assassination of her son does not deter Hezbollah from persisting in the fight against Israel. We send a message, first to the enemy, not to think that if they commit killings and if we have martyrs, we will be afraid and scared. We are people who hold the slogan, what a mistake. Don't think at all that what they are doing will affect us at all. What they are doing is just a reaction and anger as a result of the painful blows from the resistance. Thanks to Allah, God of the universe. It is important to know that irrespective of hostile voices heard in Lebanon, Hezbollah is clearly deterred by Israel's preparedness to utilize its qualitative superior forces against it, as Jerusalem is adamantly determined to reintroduce security to its northern region and preserve Israel's territorial integrity in the face of Iran's malign aspirations via its local Lebanese proxy. And while Israel understands the heavy sacrifice it will have to pay for its nation's liberty, the United States is equally determined to avert another Mideastern war that could spiral out of control unless the U.S. would ultimately deal with the orchestrator of regional instability, namely the Islamic Republic of Iran.
And while such a scenario remains highly unlikely under the current administration, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken emphasized after a meeting with Jerusalem's top leadership, Washington's commitment to help Israel reintroduce border security via diplomatic methods. We also spoke about the tensions on Israel's northern border with Lebanon, where Hezbollah continues to launch daily rocket attacks on Israel. As I told the War Cabinet and other senior officials, the United States stands with Israel in ensuring its northern border is secure. We're fully committed to working with Israel to find a diplomatic solution that avoids escalation and allows families to return to their homes, to live securely in northern Israel and also in southern Lebanon. Secretary Blinken further highlighted that during his trip throughout the region, he heard the respective leaders voiced their own aspiration to prevent the Hamas-instigated war with Israel from escalating. On this trip, I came to Israel after meeting with the leaders of Turkey, uh, Greece, Jordan, Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia. All of those leaders share our concern about the spread of the conflict. All of them are committed to using their influence, using the ties that they have to prevent it from escalating, to deter new fronts from opening. In addition, all express grave concern about the dire humanitarian situation and the number of civilians killed in Gaza. We know that facing an enemy that embeds itself among civilians, who hides in and fires from schools, from hospitals, makes this incredibly challenging. But the daily toll on civilians in Gaza, particularly on children, is far too high. Important progress has been made in increasing the amount of aid getting into Gaza, including by opening Karem Shalom. Nonetheless, 90 percent of Gaza's population continues to face acute food insecurity, according to the United Nations. Well, regrettably, parroting international institutions and regional totalitarian leaders who've contributed directly to anti-Israeli disinformation over the situation in the Gaza Strip, based on figures distributed by no other than the Islamist Hamas itself, the American top diplomat did assert Washington's outrage over South Africa's decision to take legal action against Israel over baseless allegations of genocide. We believe the submission against Israel to the International Court of Justice distracts the world from all of these important efforts. And moreover, the charge of genocide is meritless. It's particularly galling, given that those who are attacking Israel, Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, as well as their supporter Iran, continue to openly call for the annihilation of Israel and the mass murder of Jews. Secretary Blinken also addressed a plight of the families of the hostages who remain in Hamas captivity after the brutal massacre that occurred on October 7th. We know that for the people who are most affected by the attacks and the conflict that's followed, uh, time moves differently. Uh, immediately before this, I met with the families of hostages being held in Gaza and with hostages who have been released. Several of those families uh, I've now met multiple times. For them, every day, every hour, every minute that they're separated from their loved ones is an eternity. This immense human toll is one of the many reasons that we continue to stand with Israel in ensuring that October 7th can never happen again. It's also why we're intensely focused on bringing the remaining hostages home, addressing the humanitarian crisis, and strengthening protection for civilians in Gaza, and preventing the conflict from spreading. And it's the reason we're working urgently to forge a path to security in this region. It is important to highlight that the IDF remains determined to do everything in its power to return all of the hostages who remain in Hamas captivity back home. <laughs> We do not forget for a moment that in the Gaza Strip, 136 hostages are still being held, including dozens of ill, elderly, and injured who are being denied medical treatment, elderly people over the age of 80 who do not receive critical medications, children and young women who are held without protection by the violent Hamas terrorists. 
We care for their physical and mental well-being. We have a moral obligation to bring them all home, and the entire world has a moral obligation, as was mentioned by the U.S. Secretary of State, to remember them and act to release them from the hands of those terrorists in Gaza who operate with methods worse than those of the Islamic State. As part of the IDF's activities in relation to the hostages, the IDF's coordinator of government activities in the territories, Major General Hassan Alian, visited Egypt yesterday, during the course of which he met with senior Egyptian officials in an attempt to achieve a breakthrough in negotiations for a hostage release deal. The sides also discussed humanitarian aid to the Gaza Strip, as well as possible Egyptian action to prevent a situation in which Hamas could attempt to smuggle Israeli hostages from the Gaza Strip into Egyptian territory or arms from being smuggled into the Palestinian enclave. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I'd like to encourage you, pray for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. Moreover, it is important to highlight the TV7 Israel is a donation-based non-profit ministry, with all of our productions available free of charge. Therefore, if you are blessed by our daily updates and would like to help us bear the costs, please consider making a donation. You can do so by visiting our website at www.tv7israelnews.com. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you an Erev Mevorach, and God willing, We'll see you during our upcoming TV7 Israel updates. Until then, Shalom from Jerusalem.